Okay, insanity loops are a concept that I got from G.K. Chesterton in his book Orthodoxy, and he talks about the logic of the insane person. He argues that insane, the insane man is completely logical. He doesn't suffer from like logical fallacies or anything like that because he believes two things. He believes everyone's out to get me, out to get me. He believes everyone's out to get me. And when you say, nah, nah, we are not, he replies, that's just what you would say if you were out to get me. And he kind of completes the loop back that way. So this is a, a logically closed environment. There's not actually a flaw in logic here. Uh, it's circular. It's a loop. It's a story that he tells himself and the story kind of uh, reinforces itself. And anything that comes in from the world uh, will be interpreted through the filter of that story. So if he's watching CNN and the president makes a speech, uh, he will interpret it as the president communicating to the agents in his neighborhood to go get him. And if he goes to McDonald's and the lady at the, at the window asks for his uh, credit card, he will see it not as a payment transaction, but as she's trying to get his personal information so that she can help people uh, come get him. And the story, the loop, is what is the lens through which all input gets filtered. And here's why that's interesting. I, there are a lot of reasons, but here's one of them. That his insanity cannot be cured by information. His insanity cannot be cured by evidence or uh, novel output coming into his world from the outside because it's all just gonna get filtered through this loop and it's going to mean one of these two things. They're out to get me or that's what you'd say. Um, here's why this is important. Uh, since his, uh, his insanity can't be cured by information, how, well, how can it be cured? Well, it can be cured by making a leap to a bigger circle, to a bigger story to a bigger loop. So maybe in this other loop, um, he'll still be wrong about lots of things, but he'll be able to see that, oh, the CNN speech is just a speech on CNN, the McDonald's lady just wants my credit card uh, so that I can have a burger, and things will uh, be able to be what they are. He will be able to see the things that are right under his nose uh, or he'll be able to see more of the things that are, that are right under his nose um, because his story isn't twisting them into something else so much. He's not going to be right about everything, um, and he's still going to be logically consistent, and he's still going to be insane about certain things, um, like maybe he'll still be paranoid about cops coming to get him or something like that, and he'll be afraid of cops. But in a bigger story, more things in the external world are free to be what they are in his interpretation. He will see more things as they are. Um, now, this is how all of our belief systems work generally. We are all the insane man. We all are living in a story that is logically complete uh, for us in general. There are, there are a few you know, exceptions possibly, but we're not, not gonna talk about that. Uh, but basically, we all kind of live in this logically looped world where all the input goes into, uh, all the input that comes into our world gets fit into and interpreted through the lens of our personal insanity loop. And uh, the extent of our sanity is not really whether we're insane, because we are. We're just maybe less insane than the guy whose loop is that big. But it's the same phenomenon happening, it's just to a different degree. Um, so like the insane person, the only way for us to learn anything substantial is to jump to a bigger loop. It's, it's not information that can come in, it's that we have to make an act of will and trust that uh, it is safe to try out 
this different story, to try on this different story and see if it's more uh, effective for us, see if it's more peaceful and harmonious for us, see if um, we are able to see the world more clearly in this other loop. Um, this is important because it changes the emphasis on uh, what it means to seek truth and what it means to learn things. Uh, we tend to think, well, if you just add the info, people will become smarter and believe the right things. Uh, but that's clearly not necessarily the case. There are plenty of people who have perfect and abundant evidence right in front of their noses who go, uh, no, I, uh, like they find some reason that the thing they see doesn't mean what it actually means. It means what uh, they have pre-decided that it means. It means whatever it means in their story. And there's, it doesn't matter how much of this information or evidence there is, what matters is their willingness to jump into a bigger story that allows that information to be what it actually is, that allows that evidence to be what it actually is. Um, so like the insane person, in order to learn anything significant, we, in order to become less insane, we all have to make acts of will to do that. And the limitations on our learning uh, really come down to acts of will. It doesn't come down to information, especially in the internet age. Um, in the internet age, we all have access already. So it's not a matter of access. Um, Mark Twain said that, or is attributed, there's a quote attributed to him that goes something like, the person who doesn't read has no advantage over the person who can't read. And I would compare that here to the truth seeking in the internet age. The person who's unwilling to believe the truth has no advantage over the person who has no access to the truth. Well, we all have access to it now. Sorry, we have the history of humanity's knowledge uh, at our fingertips. And so access is no longer the determining factor for whether somebody knows the truth about something. It all is coming down to willingness and I hope these last few minutes have, have made it clear why. So a lot of uh, what I'm calling the emotional work of rationality in this series and in my newsletter and in my work in general is about what affects our willingness to see the visible. What affects our willingness to jump to bigger circles? What affects our willingness to see the truth, to see things as they are? How can we cultivate that willingness? What does it feel like? What gets in the way of it? How can we avoid putting things in the way of it? And, um, and all of these things. So there's a, this, my approach to epistemology is very emotionally based. And uh, I, that also gives me some hope that it's more egalitarian, that you don't have to be a high IQ PhD genius in order to understand the world uh, extremely, extraordinarily well. You just have to have an extraordinary willingness you can kind of get the truth by a certain brute force, by a certain um, you know, determination and trust that the truth will be good for you and that it is good and safe and liberating, um, no matter how uncomfortable or painful or, or, or scary it feels at the moment. So I hope that's all clear. Um, we're talking about epistemology as an act of will. We're talking about truth seeking as an act of will rather than an act of intellect uh, or an act of education or an act of information or anything like that. Um, yeah, thank you.